It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. From Spokane, Washington, a huge top 25 battle between Creighton and Gonzaga. And to get into the building, students have to wait in Tent City. It's a three-day affair just to get into the building here on Wednesday. They race to get tickets just to get into Tent City. And you can see it's like Pamplona in Spokane. And on Thursday, you start building your tent, some a little bit better than others. And what a better place to have Sean Farnham preview tonight's game. Tents are popping up all over Tent City right now. It is cold outside, and my boy Clinton Robbie, they're, they're working together as a good team right now. Kind of like what you see out of GU this college basketball season Woo! when you think about Perkins <laughs> and you think about Williams. Williams' ability underneath to play with his back to the basket and dominate down low, well, that opens up everything on the outside for Josh Perkins, who right now ranks eighth in the country and made three-pointers. And oh, by the way, he's shooting 57% from beyond the arc. You think about Creighton? They've got a dynamic duo as well. Marcus Foster and Kyrie Thomas. The two of them combined averaging over 32 points per game for Coach McDermott. If they get hot, they could pick up a major road win in early December. It's cold. I'm done with 10 City. Can't do this. The Kennel at the McCarthy Athletic Center. One of the best atmospheres in the nation. Ready for this top 25 battle. We have thawed off Sean Farnham and brought him inside the kennel. I am Eric Rothman and Sean, one of the best buildings to play in the nation. Well, just think about it. In this building, since it opened in 2004, the Zags are 182 and 17. That's a winning percentage slightly below 92%, which would put them only behind Kansas and Duke. This is as elite as a home court advantage as you will find in college basketball in a test tonight between two teams that are dominated by their offensive play. Both of these teams have earned their rankings so far this season. Well, there's no question. You look at Creighton and the stretch of games that they went through in the last week, playing three consecutive ranked opponents at Northwestern. Neutral site game against UCLA and then Baylor. This is a great test again what life is going to be like in the Big East. This is one of those games you check off and say, in February, we learned about ourselves in December. Kyrie Thomas and the great Blue Jays, 5-1, and one, and the number 25 team in the nation, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, in the white uniform, 6-1, and one, number 15 in the nation. Davion Mintz to start things off. What does Creighton need to do to beat this Gonzaga defense that has flexed, as you see Kyrie Thomas, the three, into the zone a lot this, this season? Well, you got to space out the zone, and you got to try to attack off the bounce. Creighton is really good at attacking and trying to find the mismatch because they don't have a lot of size. That forces them to play small ball and space the floor, cut, screen, and be active. Gonzaga's first possession, and they match on the three-point line. Killian Tilly, the three. Ball loose, Crumple picks it up, and a reset for Creighton. Two of the top ten the scoring offenses in the country. Well, and you've seen it on the first couple possessions. Obviously, turnover there for Creighton, but the, the first two possessions for these teams, they did exactly what they do. They space the floor, and they find a shooter on the outside. Good patient that time by Thomas. And at the other end, you better get out and guard number 33 in the corner. That's where a majority of his three-point shots have come. And Killian Tilly says, Dilly Dilly from three. Got that one in early, didn't you? Oh, I, I wasn't going to save it long. Here's Williams with the left. He had 39 points in the double overtime loss against Florida. And our second whistle will send it back the other way, this one against the Zags. So after two good offensive possessions, you have a travel and then an offensive foul after a poor shot that time by Jonathan Williams, whose efficient efficiency has been off the charts so far this season. We mentioned the zone for Gonzaga. They come out man-to-man, -man, but why this season has Mark Few gone to the zone with this Gonzaga team? I think it has to do with personnel and length. Uh, and at times, they change their lineups, and because of their length, it allows them to go bigger on the back line. Rumpel slips inside. The big six-foot-nine sophomore from Slovenia. And quick transition, Norvell missing the three. Well, Norvell getting the start tonight uh, because Corey Crisper injured his ankle the other night in the first half against Incarnate Word. They threw an alley-oop for him as he took off his left ankle, didn't give him enough lift. 
Uh, and he left the game at that point in time and will not play tonight for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Marcus Foster frolicking inside for his first bucket, averaging 18 on the season. A very balanced scoring attack for Gonzaga this season. Six players averaging in double figures. Tilly was calling for it. Put against what the backboard on the inside. Ronnie Harrell with the block, and here's Thomas the drive. And another whistle. It's going to stay at this end of the floor, but defensively, Creighton has this mentality of men don't break this season. They don't have, as I mentioned, the size underneath that you anticipate or think that you need to be able to sustain success. But good job rotating over that time. And it was Crumple with yeah. the block, not Harrell. So Thomas for three out of the inbound. Rebound for Jonathan Williams. Crumple gives him a little bit of size at six foot nine. Josh Perkins, top ten in the nation in three point shooting this season. And Tilly doing work on the inside. I love the footwork that time by Killian Tilly turning down the three point shot and being on balance and having poise and patience with the ball in the paint. Tilly's got all five for Gonzaga so far. Foster bricking on the left wing. He was drifting when he took off. He did not go straight up, straight down. I think that's what caused him to be so off on that attempt. And you miss a shot like that, the kennel's gonna let you know. Williams, one-on-one -on -one with Crumple. Is that an ISO that Gonzaga would like to exploit? Yes but they need to get a better shot out of it. The first two shot attempts by Jonathan Williams are not Jonathan Williams type shots. And what I mean by that is he is settling on initial contact and trying to go up over the top rather than using his footwork to get closer to the rim. You gotta remember Jonathan Williams had himself a game against Florida, 39 points, 12 rebounds in the PK-80. And he, take a look right there at, at a future Hall of Fame coach in Mark Few. I mean, he has accomplished so much in his time here, has the winningest winning percentage in all of college basketball as a head coach. And last year, that trip to the national championship game. 18 straight times to the NCAA tournament. And looking like the roadmap is there again this season. Preseason, the media voting, St. Mary's higher in the West Coast Conference, but the Gales picking up two early losses at the Wooden Legacy Tournament over Thanksgiving. I'll be really honest with you, too. It's not one of those things that, you know, I feel like St. Mary's is getting disrespected if they weren't picked to win the conference, and I understand why they were. So much return, a lot of turnover in the Zags roster this year. But to me, it's like the Big 12. If I'm filling out a poll in the Big 12, I'm writing Kansas in until somebody else knocks them off. In the WCC, it has to start with Gonzaga every single year. Until somebody can come in this building and knock them off and steal their crown, it's still their conference. R.T. Crumple has run the pick and slip very nicely for Creighton, and they have a six-point lead here four minutes into this one. Blue Jays on top early over the Zags. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dos Equis. Stay thirsty. Please enjoy Dos Equis response. Fast start for the Creighton Blue Jays. They're up by six, and Sean, they are anchored in the backcourt by Mr. Marcus Foster. Uh, there's no question when you look at Marcus Foster, and over the course of his career, well-documented his travels, his start of his career at Kansas State, came to Creighton and immediately fit in last year. Unanimous first team, all Big East, averaged over 18 points per game, the most of Creighton newcomers had in 49 years. I mean, those are, those are historic numbers, and they're going to rely on him a lot this year. He's a Naismith and Wooden Award National Player of the Year candidate, and he's played like it off the start of this season. His numbers could be a little bit big, better from beyond the arc, but he's kind of evolved into what he called when I spoke with him earlier, an old man's game. Look for him to be posted up, utilizing shot fakes, try to catch and create off of a seam and be able to finish. Already he's got four quick points. These two teams haven't played since 1977, but Foster, while with Kansas State, played against Gonzaga as a freshman. You called that game, I Chuck. called that game in Wichita, Kansas, a neutral site contest. And Marcus Foster didn't shoot the ball excessively well that night, but did have a phenomenal dunk. Ronnie Harrell Jr. with a head of steam. I love everything that Creighton's doing right now. They have spaced out 
Gonzaga. They're not allowing them to play in their half court. They're shoring up their defensive glass. They have not allowed the Zags an offensive rebound so far tonight. And every shot on the low post that Gonzaga has attempted has been well contested. Well, and 10 of the 13 points have come inside the paint for the Blue Jays. Pick and pop. Williams on the baseline. Right now, the Zags got to lock in at this end of the floor. Foster creeps out for three. Marcus Foster silencing the kettle. What does Gonzaga need to do to adjust on defense? Well, right now, on that last possession, they collapsed into this back screen. So the back screen is the false movement. They throw over the top. They're ideally looking for Marcus Foster. They took the bait and gave him space. Tough shot there for Williams. Not a great possession for the Zags. Mintz spinning. Both of these teams averaging 90-plus points per game. Gonzaga just looking a little out of sorts on offense. A little bit out of sorts offensively, and you've got to credit Creighton's defense. They are pressuring and staying attacked. Nelson up top for three, and that'll help the cause. Silas Nelson, the senior from Portland, Oregon. Had about 30 family and friends at the PK-80 last week. Well, they'd like to see him get going a little bit from beyond the arc because he has struggled there over the last four games, just 21%. He's most noted for his defense and ability to attack. Hachimura trying to drive, has it stripped. Mintz one on three, waits for some help. Awkward place for Mintz to pick up his dribble there. Didn't have number situation, should have kept his dribble alive and pulled it out. Crumple for three. Here's Perkins, who has been so good from the perimeter this season. He makes four of those a game, but has struggled here in the opening seven minutes. That's his first shot attempt of the game. They have not gotten a really clean look, and even that one was a little bit more difficult. Good ball fake by Harrell. And now we're starting to see both teams settling in from three. Haven't been making them, but they're sure shooting them. 11 combined three-point attempts so far as Williams missing underneath. Loose ball. And that's the first offensive rebound of the game for Gonzaga. And that's something Perkins doesn't do a whole lot of, and that's drive and get inside. But it's effective if he can get to the free throw line. Well. We're going to go back a couple of possessions ago to take you through some of the good offensive movement. What, there's some false movement. Foster gets out over the top to clear the skip pass, able to knock it down at the other end of the floor looking for an answer. You look for Silas Melson, who's been struggling from there as of late, but got his feet set underneath him on that one. How important is it to have the experience of senior guard play? in matchups like this. And how about just senior guard play in any matchup? I mean, when you're in college basketball today, you have experienced guards. It truly benefits you and your program. And it's not only Melson, it's also Perkins. And you mentioned driving to the lane. It's, it's something they've tried to get him to realize is that he's an elite level shooter. That's what Mark Few told us today. So they've talked a lot in the offseason about not driving quite as much and instead looking and hunting for your three-point shot. He can pick and choose his moments, does Perkins. But his ability to knock down the shot from the outside much better than the inside. How about this on the season? Just 7 of 24 inside the arc. That's 29%. Came into the game shooting 57% from three. I like the percentages and the numbers from three a lot better. Each team summing in three new players. As Balak is one of them, Jones is another. They scrap in the corner. It's Jones with the steal. Great defense by Jones. Come off the bench and make a play. Perkins against Kyrie Thomas, one of the best defenders in the nation. Call it Kyrie fence, call it Kyrie Island, whatever you want. He's looking to lock down Perkins tonight. They switch and a whistle as Perkins gets inside. That's what you want to avoid if you're Josh Perkins. You won't want to drive it in. Perkins called for the foul, and when we come back, a message that has lasted since 1993 and will last a lifetime. Don't give up. Don't ever give up.
Don't give up. Don't ever give up. To me, there are three things we should do every day. Number one is laugh. Number two is to think. Number three, you should have your emotions move to tears. You have to have an enthusiasm for life. You have to have a dream, a goal, and be willing to work for it. I urge all of you to enjoy your life, the precious moments we have. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Sean, that, that speech, those words get me every single time. And folks, please join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All de donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. I know cancer touches us all. Sean, I lost my dad to cancer last year. I know it's touched your family as well. Yeah, my father-in-law has been dealing with cancer now for 12 years. I swear he's made out of Teflon, but the reality is there's advancements being made. You know, we do this every year at ESPN. There's nothing that I get more excited about during the college basketball season than Jimmy V Week because, you know what, there are advancements being made, trial meds that I can honestly tell you have saved my father-in-law's life. Yes. His body rejects chemotherapy. He cannot go with the traditional methods of fighting cancer. Uh, he went through his first trial med. It ran its course. Now he's on his second trial med, and each time his quality of life still improves, and he continues to fight the fight. So when you give money, realize you're not just giving money just to give money. You're giving money to hopefully elongate someone's life until we can find a cure for some of these cancers out there and start ridding ourselves of this disease that affects each and every one of us. Those donations, those experimental drugs kept my dad alive for another 10 years. Coach McDermott for great, his wife Teresa, a breast cancer survivor. Cancer touches everyone. No matter if you know someone directly or know someone who knows someone. And being a part of the V Foundation is, as Sean just mentioned, a really big part of the ESPN family and we're happy to support it here in this game as well. Well and of course it, it all will conclude next week in Madison Square Garden where these Gonzaga Bulldogs will take on another Big East opponent in Villanova in which will be another top flight game and, and you know just look at what you're seeing right here you got two top 25 teams going again against each other in a true road environment. You saw it on Sunday with Texas A&M going against USC. You saw everything you could have ever imagined at the PK 80 the Champions Classic. West Virginia versus Texas A&M to get things started. If you like college basketball and you are not enamored and enthralled with the quality of games that have been scheduled and that you can watch every night, I don't know what, you're, what you want. For these coaches, what do these early tests tell them about their team? Uh, for Mark Few, when we asked about the PK-80, he said what it told me is my team can play with anybody in the country. Loose ball, tracked down corner by Melson. And a whistle. And that's an inadvertent there, whistle. There is no that's back a bad, on That's that. a bad whistle. That's a horrible whistle. Randy McCall got confused. He just took away a three-point yep. shot. It's not great. No, you've got to have better awareness than that. All right, so this year the rule states no matter who deflects the ball, you can go and track it down in the front well, court. It doesn't matter. It's Gonzaga's. Right. It's Gonzaga's it's ball. Gonzaga There's no jump ball. There's no nothing. That's an inadvertent whistle. But again, it takes away a three-point shot from Josh Perkins, and now they're going to have to earn their points in the half-court set. So it'll remain 18-13, to 13, under 11 minutes to play. Randy McCall, Mike Cypher, Sean Lehigh, your refereeing crew, Eric Rothman, Sean Farnham with you here in Spokane. Top 25 battle. Gonzaga trailing by five. They really could have used that three-pointer. They're two for five from three so far. Killian Tilly has one of them. The big man from France gets in the paint. I like finishes. how he's turned down the three-point shot, though, twice and got to that position and that spot on the floor to finish. And now Gonzaga in the 2-3 zone. First time we've seen that tonight. Thomas gets in the center of the zone, backs up on Larson, and Kyrie Thomas does it on both ends. Kyrie Thomas is, Coach McDermott said, best defensive player he's ever coached. He, he just takes on the toughest assignment every single night out of the perimeter and takes ownership in it. Where he's improved so much is his ball handling ability, his leadership. He's become much more vocal this season. I think that's why he's gotten up to such a good start. Nine points now for Tilly and a turnover. Here comes Melson. And it goes in. And he'll go to the line.
just as I was talking about Thomas, he gets it back tapped from behind, the throw ahead by Perkins, and then this is where the strength of Melson exceeds. He's got great body control and upper body strength to absorb that contact and finish it and give him a chance at a three-point play and a tie in the game. So Silas Melson having to earn that three points because the one with the inadvertent whistle was taken away. So now at the free throw line, and Melson this season, 88% from the charity strike, gets it to go. And we have a tie ball game, under 10 minutes to play here in the first half. Crumple, center of the zone, that shot will be there against the 2-3. Well, and if it is, you better start closing out a lot sooner because that was beautiful execution by Creighton. Crumple is up to six. Jones, the transfer from Rice. Former football player, was a basketball walk-on. Killian Tilly inside. He's had some good looks as he's moved off the three-point line and got inside. Thomas, three in transition. Offensive rebound. Now settle it down and try to get the ball where you want it to. And Aaron passed that time, but that shot is again there. Nobody within five feet of Crumple, and he will go to the free throw line. Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, we've got Coach Cowell's seventh-ranked Kentucky Wildcats hosting Harvard and Rupp Arena. And then it's number two Kansas in Syracuse in the third annual Hoop Hall Miami Invitational at American Airlines Arena. Both games are on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Martin Crawford, sorry, Sean, has really stepped up for the Blue Jays this season. Well, and in tonight's game in particular, I mean, just look at where he's catching the ball, the pressure that it applies against the defense of Gonzaga. They have not reacted well to him working against this 2-3 zone in that high post area. And even, by the way, if he misses both free throws, and he does, the most important aspect of all that is he picked up a foul on Jonathan Williams. Makes it 22-20. Isolation here for Williams. Same spot. Tilly had it on the last play. Same exact play that they ran for Tilly as Williams able to finish. Now, Williams is uh, much more comfortable with his right hand this year than he has been in the last couple of seasons. Transfer from Missouri. His red shirt year that he spent with Nigel Williams-Goss, I think, is ever, meant everything for the success that they had last year as a team. Morrell trapped in the corner. Nowhere to go. Timeout called by Creighton as the Zags have tied it up at 22. And the kettle is rocking here at Spokane. Let's all unite. That was Jimmy V's dream. The Big Apple is lit. Zags and Cats, Deuce and Connecticut. It's the Jimmy V Classic. Well, the season does not get any easier for the Zags. Another Big East opponent. They'll take on Villanova on Tuesday. Still have to get by Creighton here on their home court tonight. Eric Rothman, Sean Farnham back with you at McCarthy Athletic Center. And a pretty tough test for Mark Few and his crew early on this season. Well, you look at the games already played. Now, granted, the PK-80 for every team that was in that field, your strength of schedule is going to be off the charts at the end of the year. But the contest against Creighton coming off the heels of that tournament, going to uh, having Villanova in Madison Square Garden, these are tremendous contests that Mark Few has consistently done. I mean, he has always scheduled them. This isn't something new. There's a reason why Gonzaga basketball is a national brand. It's a reason why every single year they're in the discussion for a top three seed in the NCAA tournament. It's because of what they do in their non-conference. Toby Hegner with the three. We weren't even sure if he was going to play. He's been injured. And he comes back after the sprained ankle hitting the big three. And now an offensive foul on the Zags. For Creighton, early on here, you like what they've done in the paint. There's no question. Eight of their 11 field goals are inside. And they have just done a nice job continuing against the zone, too, in particular in the last couple of possessions of not settling for the three-point shot, instead making the defense have to collapse and try to react to that high post. And so far, they haven't done it. Creighton's had their fair of tough opponents as well. Baylor, UCLA, Northwestern. 
they have to go through a grueling Big East. Villanova, Seton Hall, Xavier, Butler, Providence. Tough Big East this season. Big East is always tough, and I had a chance to spend some time with Providence. They're really good. I mean, Kyron Cartwright, their point guard, who led the conference in assists last year. Really strong. Rodney Bullock starting to find himself. Ed Cooley always gets his guys playing free and aggressive. Back-to-back -back threes for Hegner. And he now has eight. Of course, you mentioned Villanova, Xavier, Seton Hall. Oh, these guys are just hovering around the top 25 along with Creighton. Whistle in the corner. And we, we mentioned Gonzaga playing tough schedule. How about what Creighton's gone out and done? And we talked to Coach McDermott about it. Four games already, most against ranked opponents tied with Wisconsin. But you notice they've won two out of the two out of the three that have already gone final. Fourth game obviously coming tonight. Uh, still a lot to be determined here. But not only have they played them, but they've won those games. And when I asked Coach McDermott, do you think it was going to be this tough? He goes, look, we made the schedule like three or four years ago. <laughs> you know when you come to Gonzaga, it's going to be a very difficult game. He goes, but that stretch at Northwestern, UCLA, Baylor, Wisconsin, they were all in the field together, by the way, in Kansas City. You knew you were going to play a couple of difficult contests. And what he says, is, what I found about my team is really skilled offensively. We could be really elite at this end of the floor. And so far tonight, they're playing with the poise and confidence that, that would second what their coach told them and told us is that just the rhythm and flow of their offense. Look at how selfish. Get the ball to high post, sweep the weak side, find a wide open shooter. All of a sudden, it's raining threes here at the McCarthy Athletic Center. Had three in a row. Foster and Hegner for Creighton. And then Nelson hit his second for Gonzaga. Well, look at the offense. You get the ball into the high post. You swing it opposite. Nobody's around. Anybody want to guard him? Nope. Late closeout coming from Perkins. Able to knock down the three on the outside by Marcus Foster. You impressed what Creighton has done against the zone so far? I'm impressed with what Creighton, what Creighton does every game offensively. I mean, Coach McDermott has always done a good job. I, a couple years back, I had him when his son was playing for Creighton at the Wooden Legacy. And it was just a pleasure to watch him coach and see the way their offense flowed. And this year's team has that same kind of flow. Different setup, different makeup, different weapons. But they're playing unselfish basketball, sharing it with their teammates. Both teams shooting 50% from three tonight with Creighton attempting four more. Then Gonzaga, Williams lost it, got it back off his hip. Good recovery for Jonathan Williams. I was looking at a good, good sign for an offense is the number of assists to made field goals. How much are you sharing the ball? Not a game with UConn last week at the PK-80. They had one assist 30 minutes into the game. Creighton has nine assists on 13 made field goals. Tilly, pickpocket, Norvell in the corner. That was a great play by Tilly, though, to avoid the charge and jump stop. Hegner was waiting there for about an hour. Little heat check from Hegner, missing his third three-point attempt. Would have turned that one down. Nelson to his left. Good jump stop. That's a senior move high off the glass. This has been a high-level basketball game so far. And Kyrie Thomas with the three. And he now has a three in 21 straight games. And it's a five-point lead for great, great action here in Spokane, Washington. Two top 25 teams showing you why they're some of the best offenses in the country. Marcus Foster and the Creighton Blue Jays up by five, Sean. He's been great. He's been outstanding, and he's done it in a variety of ways. A little bit of that old man game with his back to the basket, drive into the middle, elevate up over the top, and then he can stretch it from the outside. And when you take a look at these shots from three, they've been wide open, nobody around him. And because of that four of seven shooting, two of three from beyond the arc, already with 10 points to pace the great Blue Jays offense. You mentioned that old man game, talking to Coach McDermott. Foster has a new baby back in Omaha with his girlfriend, and it's really matured him and given him a little bit more sense of purpose, huh? Well, they said, you know, he had so much success early in his career at Kansas State. It's no secret he didn't handle it really well. Uh, but it would be between Creighton and Kansas State in the recruitment process initially for Foster. And because of that relationship, Coach McDermott was confident that he could help him find the right track again. And he started finding it last year. He said ever since the birth of his child, it's gone to a whole nother level. Williams baseline, poked from behind. Tyshawn Alexander, the freshman, got a hand on it. And they call a foul on Alexander. 
Alexander and Balak, two stud freshmen for Creighton. And it's a really deep backcourt for the Blue Jays. Well, yeah, and you mentioned the freshmen, and we asked Coach McDermott, what has he learned about his team through this difficult stretch of games? He said, look, my freshmen, they're still learning. Uh, they're trying to limit their slippage more and more. Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN, the 16th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. Number one, UConn takes on number three, Notre Dame at the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut. Available streaming live on the ESPN app. Going to be another outstanding game on the women's side. And, you know, Gino continues to schedule the most difficult games he can find. Went all the way out to UCLA when they were ranked in the top five and beat the Bruins pretty soundly in Poly Pavilion. Muffet McGraw's team from Notre Dame, though, they, they understand and they know how to compete against the UConn Huskies. Traveling violation on Tilly. Not going to make the crowd here in Spokane very happy, but on the defensive end for Gonzaga, Crumple had beat them on that same play twice earlier in the first half, and Gonzaga makes the adjustment the third time. Well, that last timeout was 100% called based on the fact that Mark Few was unhappy with the defensive effort. Unhappy with that call as well. Foster for three. Marcus Foster, his third triple. He's up to 13. Nelson gets bumped up top. And that'll give him a trip to the free throw line. Seventh foul on the Blue Jays as Ronnie Harrell Jr., the former Denver Nugget ball boy, called for the foul. Well, I grew up in the same neighborhood with Josh Perkins, who's on the opposite side tonight. Silas Melson, mentioned struggling a little bit from three. Only one double-digit outing in that four-game stretch where he has not shot the ball extremely well. But when he's at his best, he's driving, he's attacking, he's getting to the free throw line. He does an outstanding job of sprinting and filling the lane offensively. And it's been that way ever since he started here in this program. Coach View saying he's quietly waited for more of a leadership role to get a longer leash. And he is earning those minutes here tonight. The leading scorer for Gonzaga with 13 points. They trail by five. Foster step back in the corner as Tilly fights on the defensive glass. A little bit of a forced look that time for Marcus Foster. You like the aggressiveness, but he could get a better look, and if not, pass the ball up and have faith and belief that it's going to come back to you. Jones tiptoeing the baseline for the reverse lay-in. You mentioned it already. You know he's got good footwork. Former redshirt quarterback for Rice. Quarterbacks have got to be nimble. They need all the steps, and counter plays, handle the ball off. Got to be smart, too. Vince, head fake, good feed inside to Crumple. See, that's great offense. And that's why I say if you're Marcus Foster, you turned on that last shot, because you, you got a team that's willing to share the ball and find a great look. Don't just settle for a good look or a look you believe you can make. Believe in your team and find a great look every possession. That's how you have to play if you want to try to win a game in this building. Tilly, the volleyball pass to Williams comes from a family of volleyball players. His dad is an Olympic volleyball coach and former Olympic player, as Norvell missing the three. Tilly on the offensive glass. And it'll reset. Nelson from way downtown. Silas Nelson has 16. What would you expect from two top 25 teams? Well, knowing these two teams, you're going to understand in this building, the fans are going to be fired up. But maybe even more importantly, that you're going to see outstanding offenses. Both teams right now shooting better than 50% from the field. It's a two-point contest. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by eBay. Fill your cart right. with color.
Thank you guys. And so Silas Melson, Sean, we knew this was going to be a guard heavy team for Gonzaga. Are you surprised that the offensive production has come from Melson, not Perkins? Without question. I mean, 18 points is his career high. He has 16 here in the first half. Five for five from the field. Three for three from beyond the arc. Three for three from the free throw line. Zero turnovers, two assists. You know, and they need it because Perkins has struggled. He's got three turnovers here in the first half and has been on the bench the last couple of minutes. Zero for one shooting for him. And, you know, look, you, you got experience backcourt. You mentioned seniors, upperclassmen. You know, they, they know to show up in games like this. And when you've been slumping, you can't allow it to affect you. you just got to play through, and that's what Melson has done so far here in the first half. Set a turnover on Gonzaga. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Foster probing, lobbing, inside, Cromwell, great control. Great control, great pass in between two defensive players. That's like a quarterback dropping it in on bracket coverage in the DBs. Cromwell, very impressive. Coming off a year last year, averaged just three points per game. He already is up to 10 tonight. Until he missing the three. I cannot wait for Clemson versus Miami tomorrow. Because you're going to see plays like this, where you get a screen, you come off of it aggressively. The defense is bracket covering, but you still got to deliver a perfect pass, and you got to have a receiver with great hands. That's what you see tomorrow on the football field. Great tie ACC in. championship. Look at you. It's a professional, Sean Farmer. Yeah, just no turnover chain. <laughs> Too many turnover chains right now for both teams, actually. Seven turnovers for Gonzaga, six for Creighton. Bobble on the baseline. Harrell loses it out of bounds. There's another turnover for the Blue Jays. This is a great time of year in sports, man. You know, college football, to me, I'm all college sports. So college football is great. The news going around the country today, a lot of headlines, coaching changes, people leaving places. Jimbo Fisher ending up at Texas A&M. Huge get for the SEC to get him into that spot. Now FSU is looking for a job. Tennessee situation. I think there was a student here telling me that he would take the Tennessee job if it was offered. <laughs> so at least we know there's one. Somebody will take it. You just have to come to Spokane and pluck them out of the kennel. Didn't Ric Flair say a post yes. earlier on Twitter today saying that he would take the job? Wouldn't that be great? Can you imagine the press conferences with Ric Flair <laughs> as your head coach? Almost better than Mike Leach if they would have gotten him. Here's Williams backing in. One minute to play in the half and Williams travel. Well, Sean was talking about it, but we'll have the Dr. Pepper ACC championship game Saturday between number one Clemson and number seven Miami. A spot in the college football playoff is on the line for Dabo Swinney and the Tigers. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. I got a friend, his name's Josh Glass, right? He's got a chain that he always wears around his neck that says JG. And I always thought, I'm like, why is he wearing a chain with his initials around his neck all the time? Then I realized he went to Miami, and now the whole turnover chain, everything makes sense. It all comes together. It does. It's like a perfect blend of harmony. <laughs> I can't believe he didn't invite me over to his house to watch the game tomorrow, though. It's a little rude. Yeah. I expect a text or a phone call in the next 30 seconds. Creighton, 61 consecutive games with 44 points or more in the first half. They're up 44-37. Under 20 seconds to play here in the first half. I have been so impressed with Creighton. It is very difficult to come into this environment and even in 20 minutes execute your offense as crisply as they have. And this doesn't start, just so fans understand, they didn't just show up and just roll the ball out and play. This starts with their attention to detail at shoot around and their focus level today was off the charts good. Tom Crean's back in studio. He can tell you the value of a good shoot around and sometimes you can show up and you just read a team and go, okay, they're ready to play tonight. And this is one of those games for Creighton. At least that's how I felt watching them. Two seconds left in the half. Foster would have beat the busser, but comes up short. Creighton ending the half on a 5-0 run. So the score here at halftime is 44-37. The Blue Jays on the road on top of Gonzaga. And now let's send it to the studio back in Bristol. Speed Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer.
Well, if you want a good seat here at the Kettle in Spokane, Washington, you've got to earn it by waiting out in 10 Suit City if you're a student. On Wednesday, they race just to get tickets to get into Tent City. And then on Thursday, they put up their tents, they wait out overnight, 30 degree weather to come into the building. And although tonight Creighton has spoiled the party a little bit, they're shooting 58% from the floor, and they're leading Gonzaga 44 37, led so far by Marcus Foster as we welcome you back inside the McCarthy Athletic Center and you can see the fans not giving up yet. Great number 25 on top on the road against number 15, Gonzaga. Welcome back to halftime, everybody, alongside Sean Parnum. I'm Eric Rothman, and for Creighton, spoiling the party begins with the backcourt. Well, it begins with the backcourt. It begins about. with the two guys Foster that I talked Thomas. about, Foster, Foster and Thomas. Foster, in particular, has six made field goals, three assists. He accounts for nine of the 18 made field goals in the first half for Creighton. He's left his thumbprint down on this game so far. Kyrie Thomas hasn't been left out either. Playing extremely well, shooting 50% from the field, 50% from beyond the arc. In 15 minutes, eight points. The duo that I spoke about, though, for Gonzaga, far below their season averages. Only nine points in the first half between those two. Josh Perkins back out on the court. He needs to limit his turnovers and get his offensive game going. What does Gonzaga need to do as a pole to turn things around? Oh, well, that'll help. Take shots like <laughs> that'll that. That'll help. Williams with the dunk. Williams answers the question for Sean. Well, no, I, I, honestly, the questions are down here at this right. end. You're not going to come back in the game by just simply scoring points. You've got to be able to sustain stops. There's Foster, baseline. Foster with 15 points on 6 of 11 shooting in that first half. Silas Nelson was great for Gonzaga. Season high, 16 points. Gonzaga turning it over here early in the second. A really good double team that time by Creighton defensively. Good steal, crumple, and he draws the foul on Williams, something you talked about earlier as being very important for crumple to do. And Williams picking up the foul, but a big play to start off the half. Yeah, and it's Williams on the offensive end. Before we talk about the defensive end, a little drag across the middle by Melson, throw it up. Williams able to throw it down. But if you're able to get him to be less aggressive, you know, he's turned the ball over, then he picks up the foul on the defensive end of the floor. Those are negative plays for your team. Great dunk down. What a pass by Foster. Another whistle. Williams on the previous play picking up his second foul. And this one will be on Norvell Jr. Crumple back to the free throw line. I have been really impressed with Crumple tonight. They've run a lot of half court sets for him. He runs the pick and roll very well. He's been slipping behind the defense. And when Gonzaga went into that 2 3 zone, he really shined in the middle. Well, there's no question. And his efficiency numbers are really impressive. And he has played with composure at the offensive end. He hasn't forced the issue. He's been aware of where he is out of the court. He's made sure he's gotten to the spot where he feels like he can be successful. And because of that, the numbers speak for themselves now. 12 points on the evening. Second leading scorer behind Foster for Creighton. Baseline, Williams is double team. Perkins on the left wing, and he is fouled behind the three-point line. And Perkins, the only offensive production he has gotten tonight has been from the free throw line. Well, and not a good foul at all for a player that has not seen the ball go through the hoop yet from the field, outside of the one three-pointer that they waved off because of the inadvertent whistle. An opportunity for him to get to the free throw line after extremely cold first half and try to find his touch and his feel as the ball comes off his fingertips here. And I believe actually the inadvertent whistle of three was Nelson. So Perkins hasn't seen it go in. And so Perkins at the free throw line missing there only two points. Is there something about a guy like Perkins who relies so much on the three, who's gone cold now for 21 and a half minutes, what can he do to motivate himself, get back into the game? Just keep shooting. I mean, he doesn't have to overthink anything. I think when you start thinking about the game, that's when you start having issues you start turning the ball over you do uncharacteristic plays and we saw some of that in the first half for Josh Perkins when he drove passed the ball out but left his feet and, and got charged with the charge you know instead 
Stay true to yourself. Get open from beyond the arc. Do what Mark Few told you to do. Be an elite level shooter. Own that. And Gonzaga's still in this game, so one or two shots from Perkins can go a long way. As Creighton throws it right into the hands of Nelson. Nelson, NBA range three pointer. Perkins on the offensive glass. Great. Oh, nice pass. feed. Williams double triple pump not there, but Perkins a great pass to find it If he can get in the action that way That'll be great for Gonzaga as well Mince like a halfback through the hole Mince just one point As Perkins scrambles for the loose ball Here's Norvell the southpaw missing the three Two of the top ten scoring offenses in the country. As Thomas, better known for his defense, but he's been aggressive here tonight. A turnover on the Blue Jays. And credit to Perkins, he's missed those shots, but we've seen a lot of aggression diving on the floor on the other end, generating the turnover there on defense, so not checking out of this game because he's missing shots. I wouldn't expect nothing less from him. We learned a great deal last year. Moving off the ball a little bit with Nigel Williams-Goss, and now back on the ball. He's got to be a facilitator. A couple of good passes already in this half. That one gets him an assist. And another turnover. Williams to Norvell. And Gonzaga down by one. And Norvell a chance now for the free throw. It's defense leading to offense for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. The turnover, the push and transition, the foul on the bench. All into this one. It's a 6-0 run for the Zags. Zach Norvell Jr., redshirt freshman from Chicago at the free throw line. A chance to tie. For, for Creighton, you got to realize these runs are going to come. I mean, especially in this building, it's not like Gonzaga's going to put the tail between the legs and just walk off the court and go, oh, well, they had a good first half. You're going to have to play a full 40 if you're going to try to win a game inside this building. They've got to remain true to what they were in the first half. Good defense by Killian Tilly, the Frenchman. Chance for a lead here. Gonzaga has yet to lead in this game. It's not only that Creighton had the lead in the break. They never didn't lead in the first half. A good ball fake. Norvell baseline. Gonzaga leads. And a turnover on Creighton. They've come back. It's the biggest lead of the night for Gonzaga. They're up by 10 on Creighton. And how about the 2017 National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame induction event 
on Sunday, November 19th. A couple of guys that represented both of these schools, Paul Silas from Creighton, and of course, John Stockton from Gonzaga, along with Jason Williams, our ESPN colleague, Bo Ryan, Scott May, Tim Duncan, Cleo Hill. What a class for the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame. I've been honored enough to MC that event twice. And every year you look at the lineup of inductees and you're amazed. This class could be one of the greatest of all time. I mean, the first ever class they put in there was off the charts. But this one, amazing when you think about the accolades that these players had earned during the course of their college career, not just at the NBA level. As you see the number 12 banner hanging up top for John Stockton, who also is the father, by the way, of David Stockton. Yes, he is. Who played here at Kentucky. Let's update a couple of the guard stories. First of all, Foster went to the locker room right before the break. He is back on the bench for Creighton. And then for Gonzaga, we got word during the timeout that Josh Perkins on the bench for the Zags has been warned to stop arguing with the officials or he might be thrown out of this ballgame. We'll be watching both those things. Here's some other news of notes for guard play so far in this game as Thomas knocks down the three, a much needed three point basket. Foster in the first half, six of 11. So far in the second half, 0 for two. Norvell, 0 for five in the first half, four of five in the second half. So, Gonzaga getting the better quality of shot and getting hotter here in the second half while Creighton has played a little bit too much one-on-one -on -one in, the first, in the first stages of the second half. Great sell of the charge by Toby Hagner. We mentioned Marcus Foster, who went to the locker room just before the break. He is back on the bench for the Blue Jays with his 15 points on 6 of 13 shooting. Hasn't scored, though, here in the second half as Gonzaga has jumped out to this lead. Good slip inside by Harrell Jr. As Creighton starting to get a little bit of momentum. Eric Rothman, Sean Farnham here with you in Spokane, Washington. A battle of two top 25 teams. One from the West Coast Conference, one from the Big East. Here's Killian Tilly, lips out. Norvell's been all over the place for the Zags. Well, the Zags, you, you look at their whole entire team, they've been all over the place. That's why Creighton is struggling offensively here in the second half, because defensively they're flying around, and now offensively trying to get those second chance point opportunities. Williams, good turnaround on Hector, who got him with the charge on the last possession. He beats him for his 14th point. Hector pops out for three. already equaled the same number of offensive rebounds they had in the first half. They've equaled here in the second half at the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, we've got Coach Cal's seventh-ranked Kentucky Wildcats hosting Harvard at Rupp Arena. And then it's number two, Kansas and Syracuse in the third annual Hoop Hall Miami Invitational at American Airlines Arena. Both of those games on ESPN and streaming live on the app. Syracuse did a great job against Maryland, turning them over in that ACC Big Ten Challenge game. And have a great opportunity to be tested again against Kansas. They can turn them over, give yourself a chance. Hachimura, the big block. That's and a travel. travel. Yep. yep. Kansas and Kentucky, as we just talked about, as we see the block by Hachimura. Uh, help side rotation, so, so crisp in the second half here. Erasing and making things difficult underneath. I was going to ask you, leading into those games, what have you liked from Kentucky and from Kansas early this season? I, I think Kentucky's still trying to find themselves. They are at their best playing out in transition off of their defense. They got a lot of young pieces. I mean, that's not odd for Coach Cal, but what is odd is the number of inexperienced upperclassmen that they don't have on their roster this year. There's no player that has been around and understands even as a sophomore and played major minutes. Wendy Gabriel was their leading returning scorer from last year with four points and four rebounds per contest. Gonzaga fans wanted to travel on Foster. Instead, it's a foul on Silas Melson. Alec missing the three. Jakob Larson, who we have not seen a lot of here tonight, in there for the Zags at center. Larson missed all of last season with a right knee injury. You see him wearing the brace. It's 
Tough pass. Hachimura catches it on the baseline. His first bucket of the game. And he's starting to come in his own the last two games. He gets more and more comfortable playing the Division I level as Foster comes down and finally gets back on the board. And what a big shot that was for Creighton and for Foster. First points of the first, second half for Foster, who now has 18. There's that defense by Thomas. What makes him so good defensively? He just has impeccable timing. He plays with the fundamentals, the foundation of his game, extending out with the denial hand. And look, we, we keep talking about Perkins and how he struggled tonight. Who's been guarding him? Kyrie Thomas. Talk about one of the best scorers and one of the best shooting guards in all of the country. I mean, he's been lights out from three. Do you like Kyrie fence or Kyrie Island? I don't know, I'll let, I'll let you put that out on your Twitter account later and let somebody else decide. <laughs> what I like is great defense, and that's what he brings every single game, every minute he is out on the floor. Foul. When, when you can take away, and this is such a big point of emphasis, when you can take away the head of the dragon, and that is what Thomas has done essentially to Perkins tonight. You've taken him out of the offense. You've made him uncomfortable. He continues to sit on the bench. You give yourself a chance to try to win a game on the road. And as much as they've struggled early to start the second half, the six-point game is two-possession contest. Hachimura for three. Larson keeps it alive for the Zags. Extra pass, Larson to Tilly, that's beautiful. Start sharing the basketball. That's always been a point of emphasis here at Gonzaga. Being unselfish, finding your teammate, being a willing passer. Harrell, good head fake, and then he beats the triple underneath. Yeah, everybody jumped on what they thought was going to be a dribble handoff, and instead, he turned the corner. Play action pass for Harrell. Got the defense to bite. Tilly and Crumple collide, and it's Crumple called for the foul. Uh, Gonzaga, Gonzaga here in the second half really starting to assert itself. 52% shooting from the floor in the game. 60% in the second half. You get high percentage looks and unselfish ones like that. You give yourself a chance. They're up by six. Gonzaga on top by six back here at Spokane. Eric Rothman, Sean Farnham with you as the Zags, who did not lead at all in that first half, find themselves on top with Killian Tilly at the line. And it was Martin Crumple, Sean, who picked up the foul before the timeout as Perkins comes back in for the Zags. It's his third foul, and boy, was Coach McDermott letting Crumple have it during that timeout. You just got to be smarter. You got to be able to play through foul trouble and understand positioning at the defensive end of the floor. You don't want to give up points at the free throw line. Tilly a little fist pump. After he hits from the free throw line, he's up to 16. Foster off the curl. Do you like at least the looks that Foster has been getting? There's a better look there, but as, as fast as Perkins was closing out, a shot fake there would have given him a little bit extra space, and Perkins would have flown by. Got to help underneath. He's on Hachimura. Tilly missing short. Bodies flying. Offensive rebound. Tilly another crack at it. He oh. drives and goes over Crumple. Chimora now, and a put back, but a whistle before the bucket will be on Creighton. Well, just go ahead and hashtag it SC, top 10. There's no doubt about this one. You like good dunks? Dilly Dilly to the good dunks by Mr. Tilly. Killy and Tilly elevate and finish over the top. Nothing Cromwell could do but just wait and let it happen. He thought about jumping, he thought about going up and contesting. Tilly 
19 points he's had the last six for the Zags with Hachimura now at the line. I mean, that was just ridiculous. I mean, he just caught that ball and went straight up over the top aggressively. Tilly and Tilly, a family of athletes. His brother Kim plays at Utah basketball. His brother Kevin, a former NCAA champion volleyball at UC Irvine. His dad is an Olympic volleyball player and coach for France. He's got some ups. Here's Thomas, blocked by Tilly. Doing it on both ends. What a great drive, though, by Thomas. He saw the seam. He was trying to raise the ball, the bar against Tilly. And then it's Tilly. Come from the weak side, just poked that one away. And there's another look at Tilly at the offensive end. I think Kroppel wanted to see that one shown again on television. I think Kroppel was trying to avoid his picking up his fourth foul, so that's why he didn't contest the shot. Well, I'm glad he didn't contest it. There wasn't anything he could do. He was too deep. He was underneath the rim. Foster. Big three for Marcus Foster. Up to 21 points. And now this is, comes the moment for Creighton. Remember we talked about the first half. It wasn't about the offense, about the defense. And Gonzaga having to make that change. Creighton's got to string together like three or four stops in a row. They cannot continue to give up points. Norvell, his third three. Trading haymakers, the Blue Jays and the Zags. Ten on the shot clock. Foster nowhere to go in the corner. With eight seconds, it will stay with Gonzaga, excuse me, with Creighton. So now Nelson and Williams come back in for Gonzaga. Nice little run with those two on the bench. Foster, five to shoot. Beautiful Get, pass. Dumps it inside to Hegner. Great pass by Marcus Foster. He read the defense beautifully as they try to cheat over in the weak side position and dumped it off. Norvell in the corner. Back to back for Zach Norvell Jr. Thomas, <laughs> the answer for the Blue Jays. This is such this is high awesome. level basketball. For the first day of December, these two teams coming out of the month of November with great momentum. Both of them playing extremely well at the offensive end. They haven't let us down at all tonight. Ten point game. Let's all unite. That was Jimmy V's dream. The Big Apple is lit. Zags and Cats, Deuce in Connecticut. It's the Jimmy V Classic. The Big East Barrage for the Bulldogs doesn't stop. Tuesday they play Villanova in the Jimmy V Classic. Eric Rothman and Sean Farda back here in Spokane. Sean, how about the second half of Zach Norvell Jr.? Uh, all 18 points coming in the second half, and he's just been lights out from beyond the arc. Yeah, you got to credit a player when they get hot. Whatever he had to drink at halftime, whatever <laughs> Mark Few told him, Mark Few needs to bottle that one up and keep bringing it to him because. He has responded after a sluggish start to this game. Came into the game here's the averaging other, just eight points. Now here's the other big thing for me. You look at Creighton, and what was one of the first things Coach McDermott talked to us about today was their ability to secure the ball in their first stop defensively, meaning limiting the second chance points. About 80% of the rebounds this season they've been able to grab at this end of the floor. Norvell and one. So far in this game, they're outscored 12 to 3 on second chance points. And that play right there, a pretty easy press break for the Zags. Very easy, very confident, breaking the floor. Novell turns the corner, able to finish a career high now of 20 points as he drives and attacks. And what a great job by Norvell and Nelson to step up in a game where Perkins just hasn't had it offensively. 
Well, and you think about players, too, are so unwilling to redshirt. Norvell redshirted last season. He wasn't on the active roster for a team that went and played for a national championship. He watched, but guess what? By watching, he learned, and by learning, he's now better for it. So often in the college game, we want freshmen to come in and immediately impact the program and take it to that next level. Norvell didn't need to do that last year, but they needed him this year. And a big game here tonight against a top 25 opponent when their offense was struggling and Perkins isn't playing his A game. Each team with 14 turnovers as Creighton threw it away. by the Zags. Foster had two hands in his face. That's a tough shot. That whole possession, the ball really never got inside the three-point line for Creighton. You've got to at least force the defense to collapse a little bit. Remember when Gonzaga went to that zone, they got the ball in the high post. The defense had to adapt to it, and it opened up shots on the outside. Tilly adds another three. The tenth triple of the game for Gonzaga. Mintz rattles out, and the kennel can sense it. Gonzaga, their biggest lead of the night with three minutes to go. Gonzaga, excuse me, Williams colliding with Hegner. They're going to count that basket. Hegner called for the foul. Williams went off the glass. Well, actually, now they're waving the basket off now. The three-point shot, though, for the Zags has really got going. They were just four for their first 14. Now they're six for their last 10. Everything flowing from the outside. Even killing, killing Tilly. He's got the range. Basketball fans in Spokane take it very seriously, sleeping outside in 30 degree temperatures. And then when they get inside, the kennel is rocking. And Sean, this is one of the toughest places to play in the nation. It's a spectacular environment, and the home team feeds off of it. We mentioned it off the top. It has the third best home court winning percentage in all of college basketball since this building opened. Career night for Melson, Norvell, and Tilly. We came on to the game tonight talking about Williams and Perkins and how outstanding they have been all season long. Perkins has struggled. He's been taken out of rhythm by Thomas. Williams hasn't had his normal game, although his efficiency has been okay. It's been Melson, Norvell, and Tilly pacing the offense tonight for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Career highs for all three of them. Melson, 19, Norvell, 21, all here in the second half, and Tilly with 22. Cronkle slips inside. He goes down hard. And a whistle will send him to the line. So if we want to look ahead a little bit, Sean, Gonzaga's road gets even tougher. The Jimmy V Classic against Villanova, another tough Big East team. What are you looking for in that matchup? Well, I think just the matchup between Jalen Brunson and Josh Perkins is going to be can't miss television. You're talking about two of the premier guards in the country. I know Perkins hasn't played like it tonight. I do not anticipate that he'd struggle for back-to-back -back games. But those two guys going against each other is going to be a lot of fun. And now Villanova is consistently at the top, obviously, in the Big East. But Jay Wright, year in and year out, goes out and recruits players that fit his system. You've got Bridges, you've got Spellman. You've got a lot of different got parts this year for that team that make them a Final Four contender. For the Gonzaga Bulldogs, I'm not sure they're a Final Four contender yet this season. They came up short against Florida in that game. They've had some turnover issues. Sluggish a little bit in the first half here tonight. But they're going to get an opportunity to, be, again, be tested against the best teams in the country, like they have been tonight by Creighton, moving forward in that game against Villanova. 
Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN. It's the 16th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. Number one, UConn taking on number three, Notre Dame. And that's at the XL Center at Hartford, Connecticut. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. Foster missing from the elbow. What's the biggest takeaway? I'll also tell you this, though. Yep. When, because we get caught up in the way things are phrased. Well, right. Sean doesn't think they're a Final Four quality <laughs> team. But as of today, but the, and this is a long season. It also doesn't mean that Creighton isn't going to be one of those teams that's going to be dancing in the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. There's so much basketball to be played and the journey that it takes in order to come into that and round and form. I'd rather be a Final Four quality team in March than having me pontificate on how wonderful you are right now and how you're Final Four good. Perkins stealing the inbound after the bucket by Norvell. Final Four good in November doesn't win a national championship. Final Four good in early December, same thing. Fans on their feet here at the Kennel with a second half performance by the number 15 Gonzaga Bulldogs. Perkins to his left. A whistle and a turnover. If you're Creighton, what are you taking away? We'll get right to that. We've got a break. No break, excuse me. Gonzaga, you see the balance scoring effort. We already mentioned it. Tilly, 22. Norvell, 21. Nelson, 19. All season high is what I was going to ask you, Sean. Creighton, what do you take away from this game? I, you, you take away, what did we do right in the first half? What worked? How was our offense flowing? How unselfish were we? What was the quality of shots we were able to find? In the second half, okay, how do we get taken off that mark? How did we deviate? Was it our effort? Was it our mental approach? Was it that we allowed the defense to take us out of rhythm? No field goals for the last three and a half minutes for Creighton. As Gonzaga jumping out to their largest lead at 18 points, and now they are okay with wasting some clock. Tilly in the corner. Mention the balance of Gonzaga. As Tilly the turnover. And the steal, but six players this season already averaging double figures, and it's a really balanced attack for Coach Mark Few in his 19th year. Different year, pretty much the same story in this program. Sell out every single home game, schedule up, compete against the best, and rise to the challenge. It's what's made this program elite. It's what's got up to the national championship game last year. So Perkins at the free throw line where he's gotten all of his points. Four of five from the free throw line. No field goals, just two attempts. And now we see some of the revert reserves checking in for the Zags. Some of the red shirt sophomore walk-ons. Jack Beach and Alex Martin coming in. Excuse me, not Alex Martin. He is out injured tonight. It's Jesse Wade, number 10. So they'll get 10 and a half seconds of action here with their team squarely out in front. A very impressive win for the Bulldogs here on their home floor. Final couple seconds here from Spokane. The coaches shake hands, and it's a win. For number 15, Gonzaga beating another ranked opponent, knocking off number 25, Creighton. It wasn't about the stars, it was about the complimentary parts as they stepped up. Coming up next, E16, but first. But first, we'll stay here. Eric Rothman, <laughs> Sean Farnham, getting some extended time here in Spokane. So, a 91-74 final. If you're Coach Few, we talked about the balance. How far can that take them this season? You mentioned not necessarily a Final Four team right now, but do you like the pieces and oh, the I balance the they have? I love the pieces, and I love the fact that you have such balance within your offense. You have the ability that on a night where some of your best players don't bring their A game, you still have the capabilities to execute and respond from a first half where you trailed and then come out in the second half and shoot 62% as a team, 62%. And we mentioned that balanced scoring attack tonight for the Zags. 
all over the place. Melson, Williams, Tilly, Norvell, and that man getting it done on the inside. Well, look, three players over 20 points on the night, and none of them were named Williams or Perkins. This is an outstanding effort by the Gonzaga Bulldogs to compete against a top 25 caliber opponent and fight your way to a victory. So you see Melson and Perkins who had a tough night offensively, but Gonzaga, it's been a tough road so far. Good quality opponents early on this season. Well, and again, it steps up. Jimmy V Week, it's all about donating people. Be unselfish, help give the gift of life in this holiday season. And for these, this team in particular, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, they're gonna be part of the Jimmy V Classic next week in Madison Square Garden against Villanova. Another can't miss basketball game amongst two of the best programs in the entire country. Well said, Sean, a great opportunity to participate in the Jimmy V Foundation. And we're happy to be a part of it. For Sean Farnham, I'm Eric Rothman. We'll send it back to the studio. We got E60 coming up next.